What's up guys, this is Massey, welcome to my channel. This video I want to talk about polyprotic acids. Polyprotic acids are those acids that have more than one proton to lose. It doesn't mean the number of hydrogen, it means those is it means that the number of protons that acids can lose. Some important acids such as sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid can furnish more than one proton and are called polyprotic acids. A polyprotic acid always dissociates in a stepwise manner and one proton at a time. So if we have two protons to lose, we call it diprotic acids. Diprotic acids means we have two protons such as car uh, carbonic acid, H2CO3. So we have two steps for dissociation. One is going to be h 2 CO3 gives us proton plus HCO3 minus and we have Ka1 as you see here the concentration of products in top and the concentration of original acid in the bottom and we have the Ka. The second one is going to be the product of the first phase. First stage is going to be the reactant of the second stage. So we have H3O HCO3 minus is going to give us proton plus carbonate ion. So we have Ka2 which is going to be proton times carbonate ion divided by H3 HCO3 minus. So we have the Ka1 and Ka2 as you see here Ka1 is much bigger than Ka2. So always the first one is stronger than the second acid. The successive Ka values for this dissociation equilibrium are designated Ka1 and Ka2. Note that the conjugate base of conjugate base HCO3 minus of the first dissociation equilibrium becomes the acid in the second step. That's interesting. So for the first step, when we have conjugate base, that's going to be the acid for the second step. Sometimes we have triprotic acid. It means that we have three protons to lose. So for phosphoric acid is the most common and most famous triprotic acid is a triprotic acid, three protons, that dissociates in the following steps. So as you see here, we have three steps, H3O4, H3PO4, phosphoric acid loses one proton, it gives us this one, conjugate base, and on the second part, it's going to be the acid, loses another proton, becomes HPO42-, minus, and that's going to be the next acid for the third step, and it loses the last proton, it's going to give us the phosphate ion. So as you see here, we have three different dissociation constants, Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. Ka1 is bigger than Ka2, and Ka2 is bigger than Ka3. So as you see here, as you go, the dissociation constant is going to be much smaller. Now you can see different examples of polyprotic acids. We have phosphoric acid, arsenic acid, carbonic acid, sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid, hydrosulfuric acid, oxalic acid, and ascorbic acid. So we have the formulas and we have Ka values. For the first two, we have triprotic acid. For the other acids, we have diprotic acids. For typical weak polyprotic acid, Ka1 is greater than Ka2 and Ka2 is greater than Ka3. Let's have an example to see how to calculate the pH of a polyprotic acid. Calculate the pH of 5 mol per liter of phosphoric solution and the equilibrium concentration of this uh, ion. So we can write the equation. We have phosphoric acid it loses one proton. Ka1 is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And we write the concentration of products divided by concentration of original acid. So we write the I stable, 5 minus x, 5 minus x, and here we have 0 plus x, it's going to be x, and same thing here. So 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 equals to x times x divided by 5 minus x. Then we neglect negative x, it's going to be just 5, so x squared will be 5 times 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And after that we can find the square root, then it will be 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 1. So since 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 1 is less than 5% of 5 mol per liter, the approximation is acceptable. We just wanted to check that if we can really neglect negative x in front of 5. 
so since it's less than 5%, approximation is acceptable. Acceptable. So proton concentration is 0.19 mole per liter. We can just sub it in the pH formula. That will give us 0.72. So in this example, since we have three different acids and each reaction produce proton concentration, but since the first reaction produces much more proton concentration, much more proton, and the proton concentration produced in this reaction is much larger than the other two reactions, we just consider that concentration as a dominant concentration. So we can neglect the concentration of the produced proton from the other two reactions. So from now on, the concentration of proton is going to be 0 0.19. So the concentration of proton is the same as H2PO4 minus, which is 0.19. And the initial concentration of phosphoric acid is 4.8 as well. So Ka2, we just sub it there, 6.2 times 10 to the power of negative 8. We just put the products and initial concentration of their acids. And then we calculate the concentration of HPO4 to minus. So, which will be equal to Ka2, which is 6.2 times 10 to the power of negative 8. To calculate phosphate ion, we use the expression for Ka3 and then the values of proton and HPO42 minus. So, that's going to be, again, P phosphate is going to be 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 13 times 6.2 times 10 to the power of negative 8 divided by 0. 19, which is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Now in this example, I want to find out the pH of a sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is diprotic. The first reaction to lose the first proton is, since it's a strong acid, the first proton is going to be one-way reaction so it's going to be all the concentration of proton is going to be exactly the same as the concentration of original sulfuric acid so the first reaction is one way is irreversible and it dissociates at 100 percent but the second reaction is going to be always weak acid so calculate the ph of one mole per liter of h2so4 so we just write the second reaction, which is going to be HSO4 minus, gives us proton plus sulfate. And the Ka2 is 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2. We write the product and then the reactant. So we just have the ice table. The initial concentration of HSO4 minus is the same as initial concentration of acid, because that one it was dissociated completely into its ice. So that's why here we have 1. So 1 minus x is going to be 1 minus x. Proton is also 1 because we had strong acid in the beginning. So we have 1 plus x. And here sulfate, it was 0 plus x is going to be just x. So we just sub all this in here. 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2 will be 1 plus x times x divided by 1 minus x. So we neglect this excess here. It's going to be 1 times x divided by 1 equals to 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So proton is going to be 1 mole per liter plus x. So that's the, the first one is the concentration of proton produced in the first reaction, and x is the concentration of proton produced in the second reaction. So we can say it's approximately equal to 1 mole per liter. So it is negligible, the, the second part. So proton concentration is 1 mole per liter. We can just put it in the formula for pH. So pH is going to be just 0. Now we need to repeat this example, but this time the concentration of sulfuric acid is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So we, since we had a strong acid, it dissociated completely. So we have 0.01 for HSO4- minus and also for proton. So the second reaction is going to be HSO4 minus plus, it's going to give proton plus sulfate ion. So we just make the ice table, 0.01 minus x is going to be 0.01 minus x, and here we have 0.01 plus x, and here we have just x. We sub it there in the formula, and then we can say 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2, which is Ka2, 
is going to be 0.01 plus x times x divided by 0.01 minus x. If we make a usual approximation, 0.01 plus x is going to be 0.01 and 0.01 minus x is going to be 0.01. And then we have it like that. These two cancels and x will be equal to 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2, which is 0.01. That's going to be the concentration of proton. So let's see if we don't have that approximation, we're going to end up having a quadratic equation and we need to use quadratic formula to find the values of x. So a is 1, b is 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 2 and c will be negative 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So we use the quadratic formula, gives one negative rule which is not acceptable and one positive root which is going to be 4.5 10, times 10 to the power of negative 3. So we have 0 0.01 plus 0 0.0045, which is going to be 0 0.0145. And the pH will be 1.84. So as you see here, since the concentration of original acid is smaller compared to previous example, the concentration of proton produced in the second reaction is not really negligible and we don't need to do this approximation thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video please like this video if you found it useful you can also subscribe this channel to find out lots of videos regarding math and chemistry thank you for watching and have a great day